Dear, dear me, it's not even funny. Now then, here we are, me, the and the sunshine who's decided to put her face away and instead you can see down there we've got a little bit of rain starting and it is definitely dark oh well, Bill's mother's house there look at that anyway no blue today so you might as well just turn off now but before you do I do have a little bit of new kit to test out one being this backpack which I picked up for an absolute bargain from somewhere online and also I've got a new tent as well so I'm just going to test that whilst the conditions are pretty mild. Today we are in the Peak District. Now I know the Peak District like the crack of my ass. <laughs> I've literally never been here, never seen it. So I'm going to uh, head up into the fells and hopefully find somewhere nice to pitch the tent. What I did do is get the map out and cross-reference it with Google Maps and just find a place where there's loads of rocks and uh, I can't remember what it's called anyway I think this th thing here walking up here is called Jacob's Ladder who knows <laughs> we're doing it blind anyway let's crack on and get up there eh Come on. <laughs> so obvious, but there's a lot of Muppets out there in there who will not abide by that rule. It is unseasonably warm, 15 degrees Celsius when I left the car, which is ridiculous to say this is the middle of our winter. Anyway, as you'd expect, walking up a hill like that, I've got a right bead on, so I'm going to take this off and show you my sweaty body. <laughs> Good state of that already. Oh, yep, definitely a very strange day. See if I can uh, put this in my bag somewhere. I've got this new backpack as well. And so far, it seems pretty comfortable, apart from there's an adjustment strap section on these new Ospreys, which is here. And that is just digging in slightly. So we'll see if I can fettle it and make it work better.
Right, let's climb on some rocks. I don't know how to get up. <laughs> I don't have the energy to get up. There we are. That's not a bad view that, all the way around. Awesome. It's not quite the Lake District, but it has definitely got a wow factor to it. Ready? <laughs> yeah, absolutely awesome. Anyway, I'm going to head over there because on the map there's loads of rocks and boulders and I just think that's going to be a cool place to go find a place to pitch my tent. So, let's get down here without hurting myself. Just got to be a bit careful. There we are, safe as houses, eh? More rocks. Let's just hide out of that wind. <sighs> Here we are then, in Peak District, get that. It's definitely getting a bit chillier because my hands are just starting to feel it a bit. So I'm going to get my gloves on, I think, in a minute. But I'm still red hot in my body, sweating like hell. But I have been keeping quite a fast pace coming all the way up here. Anyway, I've just looked at the map and we're heading over there and it's called the Wool Packs. So <laughs> I am just hoping there's going to be some sort of space to pitch a tent. I mean, all this landscape here, there's probably something, but it does look a bit peat boggy to be honest. But anyway, we will find something. And if I am in doubt, I don't need to pitch a tent because I've got my bivy with me. So at least I can just uh, keep myself snug and dry in that. It is nice to be out. Anyway, let's bash on a little bit further. It's a cool set of rocks. I'll have to climb up there I reckon, but you can see it goes all the way around. And it's quite interesting, isn't it? I want to assume there's a way to the top of this. It's pretty cool here. I've got all these amazing shaped rocks. It's almost like a mini Bremen Rocks. And that's one of my most favourite places. It's got all these sort of little pathways and alleyways to explore. The difference is with this though, it's on top of a moor, so you've got all these bogs absolutely everywhere. So it's been quite a lot of bog trotting coming over the moor top. I've kept myself dry though. No wet feet yet. Cool, this one looks like a crown. Let's get up here. <laughs> Look, you can see it's got these little jewels sat on it all the way around. 
I love rocks. They're always just interesting how they've shaped over the years. Uh, let me see if I can climb up here. Good thing is, it's grit stone, so it's really grippy. These are cool. Ace, eh? Absolutely ace. I love exploring new places. And it looks like here that this is some sort of prehistoric giant's game of chess and all the pieces have just been left around and about. That's when there were giants. Giants died out about 400 years ago. It's only because they had to walk all the time because the mammoths died out 4,000 years ago that they used to ride. That were giants' horses, mammoths. <laughs> oh dear. Yep. I'm good at telling a lot of rubbish, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like a bloody kid here, just jumping around. This is ace as well, look at that. <sighs> right, you bored of all this yet? <laughs> it is pretty cool though, definitely. And back to the bog trotting. There's a pathway over there. Whoa. Tell you what, I'm not quite as agile with the backpack on. Although I only do have about 11 kilos on my back, I think, at the minute. So it's fairly lightweight. There we go. We're through the boulder field. It does not look like there's anywhere to pitch a tent though. Hmm. That's a cool rock. That looks like a frog. It's almost like a melted candle. It looks like end of the line. I've been searching all over for somewhere to pitch a tent and to be honest, there's not many places. But I've come across this. It's not ideal, it's not quite flat, it's a little bit bumpy, but we have got the cover from all these really nice lovely rocks here. They're quite beautiful and look at the view as well. All the way down the valley. So, Let's get this tent up and then I can get out of this weather because there is quite a breeze coming through and there's a hell of a lot of rain forecast for this evening. So I don't want to get caught in it now. Right, no time for dicking about. Boom, there we have it. The new tent. It's pretty much a Lanshan 2 Pro, but it's slightly bigger and it's got an inner, so you don't have that sort of single skin thing going on where you're gonna have more condensation. So hopefully it helps reduce that. I've squeezed it into this place here, but it actually looks all right, I'd say. Not a bad looking tent. Anyway, I'm actually freezing cold now, so let's get ourselves inside and get some clothes on. Oh, rig me, it's cold. I'm absolutely nithered. Let's get this uh, jumper on. Start retaining some of my body heat. 
in my bag as well I've got a down jacket and some down bottoms so I'll get them on as soon as I can oh. anyway we're in the uh, tent which is very similar to a Lanchan 2 Pro it's got a slightly bigger footprint in all directions I think and that's just because it's accommodating an inner skin so rather than it just being a single skin hopefully this is going to help reduce the condensation and really it's only a tent for sort of summer use I would say it's like a, a tarp tent really and obviously having this as a bug net is actually really good in summer as well so anyway it's got plenty of head height it is a bit flappy but these sorts of tents always are there's definitely a decent amount of space for two people a bit of a vestibule either side and it's keeping the rain off so that's the main thing let's get to this backpack so this is the Stratos 36 from Osprey and I bought this because I wanted something just a little bit smaller but still comfortable for summer use and as you can see we've got a decent sort of a air system here and it's comfy having this bouncy bit here the only problem is that thus far this strap system it's like a, a hard bit of plastic here which you can sort of adjust to adjust the height of it to suit your body shape it digs in so as i've been walking i've definitely been feeling it so if i was on like i don't know a multi-day thing i'd probably end up getting some sort of blister or uh, what do you call it chafing or something because of it so i'm not really sure about that so i'm gonna have to keep testing and see if i can adjust it to make it suit my body shape a little bit better but i do like the rest of it it's got just the usual sort of stuff some nice little side pockets nice comfy straps it's lightweight it's a, a twisting sort of frame on it which is good and the fact that it's 36 litres is pretty much spot on for me because i can fit pretty much all my winter gear like tonight in it so let's uh, dig in and see what we've got inside it eh <laughs> my hands are not working very well to be honest let's see if you're still watching you're still watching right so i have my gopro box there which i always just sort of have all my batteries and everything else in just to keep them nice and safe and all together my cooking set my drone which will not be coming out because it's too wet and too windy I've got my food for tonight just a couple of ration pack type things and then oof, this is just a dry sack and in here is my full sleep system so we have a new set of dry woolly socks to put on some under armour leggings which are just sort of more like a thermal legging so I can obviously wear them to sleep in a woolly hat we have got a set of down booties from PH Designs there my Cetus Summit pillow I've got my PH Designs jacket which I'm going to put straight on I think we'll give it a shave just get that lofting starting oh I love putting this on this is my hug my valentine's hug eh look at that and then I've got my light toe sleeping mat which to be honest I've actually really liked this I've got loads of therm rests and obviously the therm rests are top notch but this has done the trick several times and it has not let me down once apart from I did get a slight puncture in it but it was my fault but I patched it and hopefully it should be all right again and I've got my down bottoms here from TH Designs as well so those are going to go in in a minute we have bivy bag which uh, just adds about seven degrees to your sleep system so my sleep system for tonight is my jacket and then this which is a half bag let's just balance you out there we go a up 
Well, I've been laid here for the last hour or so, just relaxing. And it is something that I generally do when I get into my tent. I'll sort all my kit out, get into my sleeping bag, and then just lay down and just be present. So I've been listening to the flapping of the tent and the rain on the fly sheet, and it is just so lovely to have those sounds because it reminds me of being a kid, really going camping with my mum and dad and just all those fond memories that are associated with that. I was really cold earlier, like proper nithered. I had goosebumps and I was almost at that point where I was going to sort of start shivering. But I've got my down gear on and I've slowly brought myself around with that so that's quite nice. And tonight I'm in my PH Designs Yukon pullover and this is a K-series jacket which maximises the warmth to weight ratio and this has got a typical operating temperature of minus 15 so it's complete overkill for tonight but I'm going to use it as part of my sleep system so this is literally what I'm going to sleep in on my upper body and then my lower body I've got the PH Designs Alpine Ultra half bag now having a half bag is pretty awesome because obviously it just reduces the amount of weight you need to carry if you're going to carry a jacket anyway then having a half bag just makes you have a full top to toe sleep system which can be used on many occasions. So for tonight, it should be perfect. And it also saves you carrying like a full sleeping bag, which might weigh, what, 800 grams or maybe a kilo. And this only weighs 250 grams, 250 grams. And it pretty much packs to nothing. So just to have that in your bag with your jacket that you're gonna already carry, I mean, it's just an absolute awesome way of having a decent sleep system on a night like tonight, which isn't actually that cold. I'm also in my down bottoms as well, so really I'm gonna probably just sweat to death. I'm actually feeling a little bit too hot as I am. Right, it is getting on a bit, so I need to get myself some food. My belly is telling me that I need some. So tonight we've got beef burrito style filling with rice. Spiced minced beef with black turtle beans, rice and red kidney beans. That's an army ration pack. And I'm going to bang in some of those, which is just some good grains to go with it. So, let's get my gas canister sorted. I'm going to actually cook in the tent tonight, because I've just got loads of space. I wouldn't advise doing that, but I will keep a very close eye on it. So I've got this Primus stove as well, which uh, I really actually like this one. I do use it a lot, and it's got its own little igniter I picked that up for 20 quid it was a uh, half price actually so it has actually done me really well I've used it quite a lot so let's just find a place where I can pop that down it's gonna make it safe that should just about do it slightly on angle at the angle but <laughs> I'll keep a close eye on it so let's get this into the pan. Always takes ages squidging these out. You can just use these like a boil in the bag system, but generally I prefer to put it all in the pan together and then I can eat out of the pan as well. <laughs> I nearly put it all on the floor then. Oh dear, that would have been fun. Come on. There's one thing I'm not very good at, and that is multitasking. So talking whilst doing something is gonna be a tricky one for me. I've never been able to do it, and I always say it's because everything that I do, I concentrate on because I do it properly. <laughs> that's that's my excuse anyway. He says, he's dropping it on the floor now. Come on, Al, sort it out. <laughs> This is boring, I'm going to have to bring you back. <laughs> Couple of little bursts of wind there. Right, it's all in the pan and uh, this should actually marry up really well because that is a Spanish style grain set there, which obviously is going to go well with the beef burrito. Anyway, let's put a bit of water in just to moisten it and help it cook a little bit better. We'll light the gas. Let's have a look. Just have it on a nice low heat. Pop that on there, make sure it's not gonna set fire to the tent. <laughs> it 
it is actually pretty close if that wind blows so we'll put a lid on and I will keep a very close eye on it otherwise we might have a catastrophe going on this is why I would say don't ever cook in your actual tent the vestibule not too bad because generally it's a, a little bit better out there but anyway we'll see what happens I'm just gonna lie down now and just keep my finger on this right I think we're done we'll turn that gas off luckily we didn't burn the tent down it's pretty hot like Smells really good. It's going to be too hot to try now, isn't it? Yep, that's pretty hot. It's good though. Tastes good. I feel what it needs in here. Some tortillas to get that sort of crunch with it. Just break up a load of tortillas, bang it in and then eat it. Yep, that'll definitely do the trick for the night. Wash it down with a bit of water now, and then I'll make a cup of tea. Straight away, it made me too hot. I'm gonna take this jacket off. It's starting to sweat. <sighs> That's better. Good thing is I can still stay in my half bag. Just cinch it up a little bit round my waist and I can continue eating my dinner. Mm. A little bit of wind here and there. It's been a good day though. I've really enjoyed sort of just having a leisurely walk really. It's not actually too hard to get up to a place like this. There's a little bit of a hill but it's not like you're in the Lake District and you're having to scramble and get up some high sort of mountains it's actually just quite leisurely really so yeah quite pleasurable and now I get to eat my dinner I really enjoyed that good sort of comfort food that's what it was comfort food not quite as good as my favourite comfort food and that is a really good spaghetti carbonara you can't beat it but it's not often you can come across a decent carbonara in the UK Italy on the other hand every single one was just incredible anyway time for a brew in somewhere so we'll have a look and see what's in here I've just always got a bit of a random selection I've got a vanilla chai we have got an apple tea, a toffee nut Nescafe coffee thing, one Yorkshire tea bag and a hot chocolate. So because I've not brought any milk with me and normally I've got some sort of uh, whitener, which I don't, I can't have a cup of Yorkshire tea. So I'm going to have a hot chocolate and the coffee mixed together. There's no rules. You can do what you want. I think it should taste alright anyway. First job, let's boil some water. So again, let's get this gas lit. Pop the water on. Make sure we're nice and safe with that. I think so. <laughs> In fact, what I'm going to do is because that keeps wanting to blow. Can you see that coming quite close there? I'm just going to put my water bottle, lean it against the outside, and that'll stop it blowing in. What it might actually do instead is blow the bottle onto the stove and knock the stove over and set light to me. It's all about health and safety nowadays, isn't it? <laughs> Which most people ignore. Oh dear. We never had health and safety when I were a kid at all. We really didn't. And I've survived. <laughs> I was, I'm a bit uh, demented, we might say, but I'm still here. 
<laughs> just actually just there's been several times I've been uh, yeah in a dangerous predicament but you learn from it don't you it's all about learning in it and just uh, experiencing stuff getting yourself out there and feeling the emotion that comes with it even if it is being scared sometimes do I really get scared? Not really. But I have had fear, I guess, when I've been uh, climbing up something rather dangerous. <laughs> oh dear. It's a good life. It is. Sorry, just memories of piling through my head. Yes. Turn that gas off. Get me little doofers. They are technically known as doofers. And that just allows me to pick the pot up, pop it in its sleeve, and then I can put it down, at least make it safe. Because obviously when it's sat on top of there, it's got a bit of potential energy, meaning it can fall off and potentially burn something or scald me. Right, toffee and nut, let's get this in first. That looks rather creamy looking. It smells good though. And then, <laughs> hot chocolate as well. This is gonna be gorgeous, isn't it? I'm well excited about this. Right, let's uh, pop that down. I'm gonna put a drop of cold water in, just so, <laughs> otherwise I'll be still drinking it in the morning. Lid on. And now it's completely safe. I'm gonna risk burning my lip now. <sighs> yep. <laughs> that were a little bit warm. Okay, I'm gonna leave that a minute and not be so greedy. <laughs> and I'll just listen to the aeroplanes flying over. It's a real strange place. I'm not really used to that, living where I live. It's good to be out though, isn't it? I just, oh, I love it. I really do love it. Laid here in some very basic kit a bit of down, a tent, and on a mat, and that's pretty much all you need, it. And then you just get to... <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. I just, I just enjoy it. That's all it is. It is nice to be out. That's all I ever say. It's just nice to be out. Better than sat at home, looking at your plastered walls and your plastered ceiling. Watching the TV, which has got a lot of boring stuff on, like YouTubers laid in tents. <laughs> that is boring. I don't know why you bother watching. Oh dear. Brilliant. Just brilliant. <laughs> that is absolutely gorgeous. A really good combination. I'll be having that again. Anyway, look what I found, a cookies and cream flavoured bar. And this, again, is out of an army ration pack. It doesn't look too appetising, look at it. It's like black. <laughs> mm. It's a bit like a chocolate rice crispy. Yep, nice. Living the dream, eh? only for these few moments that you get out in solitude on a hilltop it's there isn't it it's just this I can't even speak tonight
the weather's definitely coming there's a bit of a breeze coming through which is sort of flapping the tent a bit but luckily it's not actually that loud this tent when it flaps some tents can be quite deafening and as you can hear there's quite a lot of rain falling and it is forecast to be very heavy through the night so hopefully this tent will keep us dry although i have noticed on this back wall in particular that it's actually quite damp just from condensing water which is a bit weird because that wall's dry this is all dry oh, there's a bit of a moisture there as well so yeah not really sure whether it's gonna be the best for condensation this tent but every tent in this sort of weather is is gonna have some sort of condensation without doubt because it is just absolutely saturated air anyway it's been quite a nice day we've been uh, out dancing on all the rocks enjoying all that and it's nice exploring new places i've never been here before i have no clue about the area whatsoever and it's just nice to sort of uh, take it all in and hopefully next time i come it'll be a nicer day and i can properly spend some time exploring everything so yes i do enjoy it it's always nice coming to new places anyway i am ready for bed i brush my teeth jacket on got my half bag on this is me ready to sleep my hands are warm enough currently although i would prefer to have a nice pair of gloves to put on i do have a set but they're slightly damp from messing about earlier so if needs be i can pop them into my pocket here and that just keep my hands warm in the night or i guess i can drop my arms into this Oh, there we go that's nice and warm so that'll do the trick as well anyway it's time to lay this lug properly so we'll see the morning take care flowers I slept solidly for about eight hours last night and I was definitely warm enough just in the gear that I'm in but I on a few occasions when I sort of turned over from side to side just to reposition myself I felt a little bit of a chill run through my spine just because the down if I'm sort of laid on this side and then the downs all compressed I turn on to the other side then obviously it's sort of a thin for those moments and the chill in the air would obviously just uh, transfer to my body quite quickly I mean it'd only be a minute or two and then I'd be sort of back warm again but it's definitely something to be aware of whereas when you're in a sleeping bag this is sort of all trapped air so it's uh, a little bit better at keeping you warmer rather than just in a jacket and with a sleeping bag as well what I tend to do is I turn within the sleeping bag so all the lofted down sits over the top of me and then I turn within that so I never actually sort of uh, compress it and then turn over and have that sort of a compressed down such in the cold air if that makes sense so anyway I was nice and warm I could have done with really a set of gloves which would have been better because I just kept sort of uh, dropping my top arm into the bag and then um, obviously that kept that one warm and then this one would just sort of sit under my face so <sighs> it's nice to uh, have a good night's sleep though up on a hill like this anyway as you can probably tell it's raining so i just do not want to move from this place at all i can just see under the edge of the tent there and it is very claggy as well so i have no desire to get out and get packed up at all so i'm just going to sort of chill here for a while and I think I might make a cup of tea actually, have a couple of snacks and then at least just uh, prepare myself ready to embrace the weather.
Fruit tea is definitely a bit weird. It's not quite the same as a cup of Yorkshire tea, is it really? But it's wet and warm and that's how I like it. And I'm just looking at the temperature data from last night and it was definitely cold and damp. So wet and warm is better than cold and damp. It dropped down to about six degrees Celsius and sat at about that for quite a while really. And the current temperature is only 8.3 degrees. So it's still not too warm, but it's nice knowing that this sleep system works comfortably at that temperature. So I'd like to sort of push it a little bit further really and just see how sort of cold I can go just with something as lightweight as this. I mean, sleeping in a jacket's a bit of a funny one because the surface area is increased because obviously you've got more touch in the outside. Uh, so you're gonna lose heat a little bit easier that way. I mean, obviously you can reduce that by making yourself into more of a ball but obviously you just need to work out really how you sleep yourself so for me I do actually probably close myself up fairly tight I don't know <laughs> I'm not one for sprawling out loads anyway so yeah I'm gonna uh, have to get all this out again and test it to a colder temperature it'd be nice to get it down to freezing and see what sort of a uh, how it handles that really anyway I'm gonna finish off this weird cup of tea It's all right, it'll do. Well, it seems like the rain has stopped, so I'm gonna risk getting out. I've got my backpack completely packed apart from the tent. Jacket on, gloves on, boots on. Let's get outside, eh? And I've not even been out yet, so I don't have a clue what it's like out here. <sighs> See if I can do that one-handed. I can't do that one-handed. Stay there, stay. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> this doesn't look too pretty out here. Yep, yeah, proper clogged in. Very poor visibility. <laughs> Very poor visibility. <sighs> But hopefully I can find my way back off here. It's not a bad spot though. I've got a lovely rock here, which is quite beautiful. The tent just fits in. A smaller tent would be a lot better here. And the views are just to die for. Look at that. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Ah, just had a big downpour. Luckily, every jacket on already, so I was prepared for it. I didn't want to be wrestling two things at once while that rain started coming down. And also, the tent dropped in about one minute flat. That was it, so it was really nice because I wasn't messing about standing in the rain, getting really cold hands while it's persisting it down. Anyway, leave no trace as always. Thank you for your hospitality, and we are now gonna go swimming through this pea soup. Let's get out, Lee. I'm back down, out of the mud and clag. <laughs> I'm not gonna fit through that. I wanna have to go through Fat Man's Gate. <laughs> oh dear, I must be getting fat in my old age, eh? 
Well, it has been miserable at best. Misty, foggy, claggy, rainy, all those lovely damp words. But to be fair, it has been quite a pleasure being up on that hill and just enjoying being outside. And as I always say, you don't remember the night sat at home there looking at your plastered walls Whereas something like that, you get out, even if it's bad weather, and you still have those memories made. Anyway, it was nice to explore somewhere new, although I won't be coming back. Not in these conditions anyway. If I do come back here, it'll be in summer where everything's nice and dry and we are free of all the bogs and mud that's up there. Because it was honestly ridiculous. I'd also come back in deep winter when it's all frozen because again, it's a nice dry time to come. Anyway, if you've enjoyed the video, give it a big fat thumbs up. And if you wanna, hold on. <laughs> if you wanna contribute towards the channel, you can do so by buying me a coffee in the buy me a coffee link, which is in the description, or you can also join the Patreon. And obviously all these contributions just help keep me getting out here and making all these videos. And also share the videos, share my channel. Let's spread some of this positivity and try get people out into the mud, seeing the nice little waterfalls and enjoying the great outdoors. Anyway, from me, no blue. We'll see you on the next one, take care.